Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, um, I share things about photography that I'm involved in, a lot of darkroom printing, and in this particular series, I am going over um, how to mat and frame your pictures to get them up on your wall. So this video is gonna be all about cutting your mat boards, and let's just get right into it. Um, after I show you how to actually cut the mats, I'm gonna go over a few just thoughts and ideas on mat cutters and mat boards and some other things. But I'll save that to the end. Let's just get right into how to cut a mat board. So the first thing I would do is if you buy a full sheet of mat board, those typically come in 32 by 40 inches. Now for this picture, um, in the previous video, I showed you kind of the measurements and how to figure that out and pre-visualize it. So if you haven't seen that, maybe go back and check out that video. But I find that 32 by 40, you can cut uh, four 16 by 20s. So it's a very efficient way to use a standard uh, size mat board. And a lot of times I am matting up into 16 by 20 anyway. Um, so it, it just works out perfect. So if you have a full sheet, the first thing you're gonna do is cut that into quarters. Um, I use the straight cutter on my, this is a Logan Simplex Plus mat cutter. And so that's the first step. All right, now, so I know from the previous video and the um, dimensions that we're using, the outside dimension was 16 by 20. The, the inner mat, the part we need to cut out, needs to be 8 by 8, and that's going to give us a half-inch border around that picture. So really what we need to know here is the, the distance from here to here, here to here, here to here, and here to here, the sides, the outer sides, and that's what we need to cut. All right, so I'm going to show you how to cut it on this particular mat board. And then I'll just go over some kind of things if you don't have like the side guide and the, and the, the bottom guide, um, what you would need to do. But the first thing you wanna do is find one edge because you need a place to line up this little mark to start your cut. Actually, we'll start with the seven inch. And to do that, I'm gonna take that off for a quick sec. And because my side guide does not go up to seven inches, I'm gonna take a ruler and mark this. And basically, if, you're, if your mat cutter doesn't have the side and bottom guides, you'll just have to mark this all the way around. But for this, my side guide only goes up to, it looks just about six inches. So to make a bigger border, I can't really do it um, with the actual guide itself. Let's put that there. So then I'm gonna, wind up this little mark and just draw a light line. And I don't even have to draw this all the way across. I need to just draw it out to about there. And the reason that is, is because I need to, when this goes on here, I need to just line up this. And that's where it will start. And that's really all I need with this particular mat cutter. If you don't have the other guides, then you might wanna draw out all four sides. So you'd measure four inches here five inches here, four inches here, and draw those out. But because this has the guides, I don't need to do that, which is nice. So next, I know this is gonna be five inches and this is gonna be four inches. So the bottom one, I'm gonna mark this bottom guide. And I would have to say if my mat cutter only had one feature and it was just a straight and it didn't even have this bar, I would want it to have this bottom stop. Because what that allows me to do is not have a line here to try and stop this at. Because when you're pressing, you gotta use some force to make a clean cut, and it's hard to stop exactly on a line, but this stops it for you. So, so for the edges, we're gonna put this at four inches. The bottom, we have five. So this is seven, four, and five. And we measured this one. And the next thing we need to do is make sure that we have a clean, sharp blade in our mat cutter. So I tend to change the blades every mat. So two cuts and I'll reverse it, two cuts and I'll, I'll repurpose the blade for other things. You don't have to replace it quite as often. And basically just slide this in here and tighten it down. But what'll happen especially with these cotton, 100% cotton mats, they kind of dull the blades quite a bit quicker. 
and it will start tearing through on the other side and it's not gonna look it's it's not gonna look as nice. So put get yourself a fresh blade. Then you're gonna need a slip sheet like this, and this is just a scrap piece of mat board, and this has to go underneath and cover the part where you're cutting, basically. If you're new to cutting mats, you will you will definitely mess up. So when you do, don't fret. Just be like, hey, I got I got some more slip sheets. It's all good. Um, you know, move on to the next one. Take your time and do it again. If you don't have any, you could probably ask your local frame shop, hey, do you have any just scrap pieces of mats I could use for a slip sheet? They'll probably give you some or sell you some very, very cheap because they will have a ton of them from just the scraps that they cut off. Um, but otherwise, I have tons of either either mats that have screwed up or just other pieces. But what that does is it it allows the blade to go into something on the other side. And again, just like with the sharp blade, it's going to give you a really clean cut on the other side. The other thing I would want to mention is you want to have very clean, dry hands. Um, if you don't, get yourself some cotton gloves and use them because you don't want to be putting smudges and things on these mat boards. And I guess one more thing to mention, we're going to cut through the back side. So if you're not using a cotton mat, like I can use either side on here. But if you're using like a colored uh, core or a colored um, front mat, you're going to cut through the back. So now we're going to put this in here. I got this guide set for four inches. I've got the bottom guy set for the five inches, and I have the top one marked at seven with a line right here. And I have my slip sheet underneath. I have a fresh blade in. I'm just gonna put this on the, the ridge here, mark it, line this little mark up with my pencil mark. And then this one has what's called, it's a, it's a little pin here. I'm gonna press this in, and I'm gonna do that while I actually engage the blade for the first time, like when I when I put the blade in. And what that's gonna do, and then I'm gonna release it, and I'm gonna just make a nice two hands, clean, smooth cut. And what that little traveler pin does is it, it keeps it from traveling and messing up like where the blade is actually going in. So a quick note on this uh, traveler pin, don't press it down really hard as it will uh, poke through the mat board and ruin your mat. So just lightly press it down to keep this um, from moving. So now we've made our first cut. That's gonna be from seven inches to five inches, the four inch border. Then we're gonna turn it to this side, which now we have four inches, five inches, four inches. So. Again, with this mat, I don't need to draw a line because I just cut a line, and that's where I'm gonna uh, line that up with. But I do need to change this side guide to five inches, and the bottom guide from five to four inches. Make sure my slip sheet's in there. Put my mat back in. Make sure it's nice and square on the bottom edge. And then double check my measurements. What is it? Measure, measure twice, cut once. That would probably apply here. And then I'm gonna line that up, press my pin in, engage the blade, release the pin, and just smoothly cut down until that stops it. Then we have our second one, and you can see that it, it, it cut the opening. So and we proceed to do that all the way around. So next I have, this is gonna be five, four, but I don't have to mark this again because it's already, it's already marked there. So it's gonna be five inches, four inches, and this one's gonna be seven inches. So I have to change the side to four. Lock that down. Change the bottom to seven. I like to kind of shift this around. You don't want to keep cutting on the exact same spot if you can help it, um, that will help. And now I did two cuts and like I said, I will flip this blade around to make sure I'm using a very sharp edge. And I usually do it every other cut. It might be a little, little obsessive, obsessive, too much. But I, 
I'm a little particular about my mats and I don't like to see any ripping on the other side. So you can test it out, your mileage may vary. I would definitely do it at least every couple mats, but you, you can decide on that. So now we have the four, the five, or the five, the four, and the seven. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Got the slip sheet in, fresh mat. And if you didn't have the guides and I didn't have this, I would have to start the cut here and stop it on this line, which you can kind of see that line. But like I said, it's really easy to go past that. So that's why I really like the feature of the, the bottom stop. And most of them do have it. Um, I'll put that back. So I can line this up on here. Hold it down, press the pin, engage the blade, release the pin, and just do a clean. And now we're three quarters of the way done. We have one more. This is gonna be the seven inch side. Yeah. If you didn't have the guides on the bottom, or the side, this is how you would, or if you didn't have the side guides, I should say, this is how you'd have to handle that. You're just gonna line up that mark with the ruler, like so. And then we know this is four inches, so we're gonna mark that at four inches. And then we have exactly what we need because like I said, this side guide only goes up to six. So we're just gonna use the mark that we measured. Clean, uh, clean blade still. Put that on the line, of the, the four inch line. Press down the pin, engage the blade, and slide it down. Hold your breath. And there you go. And there is our mat. So that is how you would cut uh, your mat board using a mat cutter like this one. Like I said, some have the sides and the bottom gauges, some don't. If they don't, you just have to do a little bit more measuring and marking, but they will turn out the same if you follow those steps. So then I usually put it on my backing board And usually the first thing I will do is grab my actual picture. So I'll put my picture here. And then to just make sure that I, I have everything measured right. So I wanted a half inch border around the image and it looks like everything lines up perfectly. Now, as far as mat boards go, there are um, a few different options. You can get just regular paper mats, which I wouldn't recommend. Those are just used for, you know, maybe reprints, things like that, but they're pulp based and they have acid in them and it will eat your photos over time. The next is an acid free mat board, which this is a step up in the right direction as it's made from cellulose and it's free of, um, they remove the acid and lignin in the actual papers. Now, when it comes to these particular mats, these are um, rising museum mount mat boards. They are 100% cotton rag mats. So there's a few different companies, Crescent, uh, Bainbridge makes very similar ones. Um, I really like these mats a lot. Um, so they're 100% cotton, they're lignin free, acid free, and very good quality. These, the ones that I have right now are buffered. So they use what's called calcium carbonate in it to eliminate any acids that are in the environment. So there is quite a bit of debate whether that is good for photos or bad for photos. Um, I know in particular like older processes, albumin, albumin, and some others that use like animal proteins, you're supposed to use unbuffered. So there is a lot of mixed mixed information out there on that. I think these are just fine for um, photographic use, but if you're really, really concerned and really, really picky, you might want to look at um, the unbuffered ones. There is a, a rising 
Uh, it's called photo mount board. But for all practical purposes, this is about as good as you can get. And on that note, if you don't want to cut your own mat boards, there are some places where you can just order them pre-cut with an opening in them with really high quality. You could also um, go to a frame store and get um, have them cut your mats. Now they may or may not have uh, the museum quality cotton mats um, at your local frame store. If they don't, they can probably get them. And there is a frame shop here that I have brought my rising mounts to and had them cut them for me when I just don't have time to do it. So there are always um, options available as well. Now, when it comes to the actual mat cutter, like I said, I've had this one for 20 years and it, it has done just a great job. Now, it is not like a high-end mat cutter. A lot of um, higher-end ones will have like ball bearing um, units that go on here and slide. But the good thing about this one and why I would recommend this, especially if you, if you want to make something like this and do a lot of it, is that you get a glass cutter, you get the straight edge cutter, and you can do it all with this one unit. You don't need a separate trimmer and things like that, which sometimes with the higher end ones, they'll only cut the bevel or it's a it's more complicated process. But I guess my point would be is that when you're looking for a mat cutter, keep that in mind that it can you know, cut the mats square and do the bevels and all the things that you want it to do. And I would get one that you can have a, a glass cutter attachment on as well. But that pretty much covers it. So that is how you cut a mat board. Now in the next video, I'm gonna go over like some different mounting options and how to get this into a package and ready to be framed. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please hit the subscribe button and we will see you in the next one. Thank you.